Hey everyone, welcome back to TK's Tech Talk. So today we're going to be looking at this Kyoxia Xeria Plus 256 GB micro SD card. So let's just have a look at quick look at a few of the features and then I'm going to take it out of the packaging and do some benchmarks to see how it uh, re writes and reads inside a laptop. At least that's the initial test that I will be doing. So the card is rated at V30 U3 Class 10 a1 and it's a UHS-1 card and this packaging is actually pink I'm not sure if it shows in the video properly but it's quite a bright pink color it's, on my camera screen it looks a bit red but anyway uh, let's have a look at the back so the back actually has some nice information and for the first time I'm seeing something which is quite interesting so it says 4k video waterproof shock proof for Android read speed 100 megabytes per second write speed up to 85 megabytes per second one thing I want to point out here is that 85 megabytes per second is only for the 256 and the 512 GB card. For the ones that are lower than that, I believe the 128 GB is 65 megabytes per second. And anything below that, I believe is 45 megabytes per second. Now, because this is a 256 gig card and because of the way the numbers add up, it's actually 230.4 GB usable if you format it on your Windows system. It's going to look like 230.4 gigabytes, maybe in most devices as well. It will never show 256 gigabytes, and that is because of the numbering schemes. And you can see they clearly pointed out here that 1 GB is uh, 1 billion and whatever bytes, not 1000000. That's where this discrepancy comes in. So, numbers not actually wrong. It's just about how the computers read the data. And I have a video on that, so feel free to check it out if you want some more information about that. So what's nice is it looks like it's quite easy to open. I don't think there's anything else interesting here. It's got a five year warranty. I'm not sure who the underlying company is or if it's a new company. I have seen some Kyoxia things floating around. I think there was even a Kyoxia SSD in one of my laptops. Um, but let's open this up. So they just pull this tab here, nice and easy. No need for the trusty kitchen knife today. It just opens up literally as simple as that. And how is this set up? Just peel away, I guess. Come on. So I bought this for uh, my camera, and it does say it records 4K video, though I typically record at 1080p. Let me just get this out of the packaging, and I'll be back in a second. Yeah, I did manage to eventually. Peel it away, it's quite straightforward. And I'm not sure if you can see that clearly, but there is a card. It's a nice small pink card with a black, black side, and this is the SD card adapter, just your basic SD card adapter. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my laptop, I won't be needing the adapter for that, I'll be using the adapter for my camera, and let's do some speed tests. Right, I'm back and I've got my Precision 5540 and I'm going to be plugging the micro SD into there with the use of an adapter. So this is a base QI adapter which allows the SD card to sit flush inside the laptop. So let me put it in and show you that. So here's the micro SD card. We're going to slide this inside. Sorry about the focus. It's a little bit fiddly because um, I'm guessing because of the artwork, but there we go, it's inside, nice and flush. And then we just stick it into the laptop. And let me see if I can show this to you. There it is, nice and flush inside the laptop. It's a handy adapter if you want to use a micro SD card. And straight away, it's opened up the drive. So let's close this so we can have a look at it properly. So there it is, it shows indeed 230 gigabytes. I'm hoping that you can see that properly on the screen. If I just do properties, it shows it's formatted as XFAT, which is a good start. It means that we'll be able to handle larger files over four gigabytes. So let's open Crystal Disk Mark. And let's do a quick test. I think what I will do, I'll start this test now and I'll let it run and then I'll come, oh, I just realized I selected the wrong drive. There we go, there we go. So I'm gonna let it run and I'll come back with the results back in a moment. Okay, and the test is just about finishing up and we've got some pretty respectable scores so far. We've got a read of 92 megabytes 
and a write of 86 megabytes and even exceeding that in one of the tests at 88.45 megabytes. So random 4K write seems a little bit slow as well as the random 4K Q1 write. The sequential Q8 and Q1 seem pretty good. So the cards are doing quite well so far. So let me try and copy a file to see if this 85 megabytes write is affected. Just bear with me a moment. I'll be back with the file. Okay, so I've got this 25 gig file on my desktop and I'm going to copy this into the SDXE card as you can see here. It's a little bit out of focus. Let's just zoom out a little bit. There we go. So you can see here clearly it is the SDXE card. So I'm going to drag this and put it down and see what happens. Right, so at the moment we're getting around 77 megabytes per second. Hoping you can read that clearly. And it says five minutes and 30 seconds remaining. So the first time I did a copy test, by the way, I did actually manage to get 85 megabytes per second. I'm not sure if it's because of the uh, benchmark tests, but let me, when this gets towards the end, I'll start recording again so we can see if, it's a, if it was able to sustain at least 77 megabytes per second, which is still respectable score for a card which is stated at 85 megabytes per second back in a bit okay so we're at about 30 seconds remaining and we've actually gone up to 80 megabytes per second uh, sorry about the focusing issues there let's try to zoom out just a little bit and see if that helps and we're almost finishing up so it was able to copy a 25 gig file consistently at around 80 megabytes per second it's even touching 81 now so that is pretty impressive. I'm not sure if a bigger files will, will impact that, but 25 gigs is a fairly reasonable size to say that this card uh, performs sufficiently well. So that's it for this test. And just let me take the card out and let's see how hot the card is back in a moment. Right, so there it is. And to be honest, it's not even very hot. It's barely warm to the touch. So I'm not sure if that's just my card or my luck, but that is very good. The fact that it hasn't warmed up so much. So anyway, thanks for watching. That's it for this video. Please feel free to like and subscribe and ask any questions and I'll see you in the next one.